Hi folks, thank you for stopping by my channel, that's Reason Together. Uh, I hope you remember last time I just talked about power and faith. Now I'd like to continue to share something with you and I mentioned to you also that I will talk about false teachers. So let's go uh, to the scriptures and I'd like to talk about John 1.12 and also uh, Romans 1.16. So, uh, uh, let me think now, okay. There are two Greek words translated by the word power on the uh, John 1.12 and the other one in Romans 1.16, okay? Uh, to as many as receive him, to them give he the power to become sons of God. It's in John 1, 12. The word here is from the Greek word, which was used in the first century to refer to a legal right. That is, a person was given the legal right to do or be something. A sinner who appropriates Christ, Jesus Christ as Savior, is given the legal right of God through regeneration to become a child of God. So here, through the regeneration, he became a child of God. But his le legal right to regeneration is procured by his action of trusting the Lord Jesus as Savior. In regeneration, God is extending mercy to a sinner who has violated his laws. Violating of law incurs a penalty. Justice demands that a penalty be paid. Until the penalty is paid, no mercy can be given. But if one bears the penalty himself, no mercy can be shown. Therefore, Jesus Christ paid the penalty of the broken law in the sinner's stead. Justice is satisfied. If the sinner desire mercy, from God, he must recognize the payments of the penalty by Jesus Christ before he can be a recipient of that mercy. When he does that, he has the legal right to accept that mercy. Therefore, regeneration must first be preceded by justification not in point of time, but in the divine economy. Therefore, to as many as receive him, to them give he the legal right to become children of God. The word in the Greek translated sons is from a word whose root becomes from a verb which means to give birth to. Thus, the word means born, born once. The new birth is in view here. The word receive here implies an active appropriation, not a passive acceptance. It is used synonymously for the word believe, which in the context like this one refers to a divine or yeah <clears throat> death is a definite art act of the will and trusting as trusting excuse me oneself into the keeping of another. The same word for belief is used in John two twenty four, where Jesus did not commit himself or entrust himself to man. 
The whole translation was, I can read, to as many as appropriated him, to them he gave the legal right to become born once of God, to them that are trusting in his name. The other word of power is in Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. The word in the Greek means power, is in the sense of that which overcome resistance. Our English word dynamite comes from this Greek word. The gospel is God's spiritual dynamite which breaks the granite-like heart of the sinner into excuse me, rock dust, pulverizing it so that it becomes rich soil in which the seed of the word finds root and grows. The gospel is the most powerful thing in all the world. When it is on a, when it's loosened in the spirit empowering preaching of the word, souls are saved. Isn't it beautiful? The word gospel is from a Greek word which means good news. The good news is that God has wrought out a salvation through the blood of the cross for needy sinners who may by pure faith without the addition of good works appropriate the self that salvation as a free unmerited gift anything else than that is not gospel for it is not good news here again, God, out of love again, even though He condemned us because we are sinners through Adam, and the only thing He could do, He Himself has to show us how to redeem us. That is His love for us. I hope you understand the word, what God and, and his action, what God is trying to tell us. And that's why he can say, there's only one God. There's no God before me and no God after me. Because he's the one who created everything, including you and me. And because out of love, even though we sin against him, God says, right? Don't eat of that fruit to Adam. You surely will die. The day you will eat of the fruit, you will surely die. And they did. And on that day, that moment, the human race is condemned. You can read it again in Romans 5, 12. By one man, remember? The human race is condemned. But also later, by one person, we can be redeemed as Jesus Christ. And yet, a lot of people don't believe in that. They want to do their own thing. They believe, I will go my way to, to be good. I say in 64, 6, what it says. All our human good deeds are like filthy rags. Because none is righteous. None of us are, are righteous. So, here God keeps telling us and warning us. And pleading with us. Please. Listen to me, go my way, and I give you what? Rest. I like to talk about this particular thing. So now you know about different, two different powers, okay? The salvation and the gospel. And I like to talk to you real quick. I said before, little by little, I go a little deeper in theology. This is also important when Christ was talking in Matthew, and I share with you about, uh, let's say, Matthew 18, uh, 16, 18, and 19, 
when Christ talked to uh, <clears throat> Peter or to the people, who does people say who I am? And then Peter says, you are the Son of God, right? And I also say to you, you are Peter. And on this rock, as I shared with you before, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I said it before, before about faith, remember, and about the church. And then he added this one. And I will, what? Give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose this on earth will be loosened, loosened in heaven. Wow, that is a powerful statement, you know, that he said that. But yet, a lot of people, false teachers, misuse this. Let's go back a little bit further. Matthew 18. Now I'd like to read to you also, I repeat again in a way, verse 15 till 20. Moreover, if your brother sins against you and tell him his fault between two and him alone, if he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, Take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So here's a story about in the church somebody sinned and people know about it. So the leaders, or two leaders more or less, come and try to con tell the person that and the says over there if the person repents is losing if he doesn't repent is something is binding and this is what the scripture is talking about binding and losing and who has the authority I'd like to go back also to you real quick to John 20 verse 23 Actually, 20, 22 is talking about Christ just before he left. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he says to them, receive the Holy Spirit, don't to the apostles. And then he says this, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If they retain the sins of any, they are retained. This has to do with losing and binding. To make it a little more simpler is this. And this is what a lot of false teachers use this about the power and binding and loosing. They call it actually the word of faith 
movement. They say you can speak it and it's going to happen. Because they believe, according to the scripture, they have the power to bind and to loosen. They even use it to people who believe in, who are sick, to rebuke the sickness. And they will be healed. And if that person is not healed, you know what they told them? You don't have enough faith. I have experienced that, folks. This false teaching. Or they go out in a certain area and they said, I'll bind Satan, so and so and so and so, you know. They believe they have the authority. But the meaning is completely different. All is saying over here, the leaders or any Christian who are mature, to tell the gospel, right? I told you about the power, the gospel. When a person rejects the gospel, what happened? Heaven is closed, it's bound. When the person gave his heart to the Lord, and I see Jesus as Savior and Lord, what happened? Heaven opened. And the angels are singing and glorifying God. Because angels don't understand salvation, folks. That's why they watch us, what's happening. So here is a simple explanation. There's much more to it, but it's the basics, okay? What it means, binding and loosing. And who has the right to do it. It's the church, the leaders of the church, and every mature Christian. That's why it's so important if you really are a Christian, that you know and you know that you are safe and you are able to share based on the Word of God what happened to you. You are regenerated by the power of God. That's the whole key in, a, in what, when it comes to the Word of God, with the Gospel. And the Bible says what? It's free. You cannot work for it. It's a gift. And you cannot work for a gift and you cannot, pay, you cannot buy it. You know, people say the word faith, just put your faith in it. Faith is impossible. I, when I witnessed before and even still do, this, this is the example I use when it comes to faith, okay? I said, okay, John, you know me very well. Yes, he says. You trust me? He said, yes. He said, okay, and I know you, you're like a certain record, let's say from Elvis Presley, you know. Oh, yeah, he says, I like it. He said, you know what, John? I bought it for you. That special record, only one single song, but you really like, I bought it for you. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. And he believes me. He trusts me. He has faith in me because he likes me and he knows me. But folks, he can wait a thousand hundred years. Until he received it, he never got it. That's the same thing with salvation. You can believe a million times, a hundred years, who Jesus is. But if you never have accepted Him or appropriate Him as you're saving your Lord and give your heart to Him, you're not saved. Very simple. But people said, oh, you just believe. You heard about Christ, what He did on the cross. You just believe. In Philippians, I told you before, there's no other name written in heaven, on earth, or on the earth where you can be saved, except the name, what? the name of Jesus, right? The only name. But it says also over there, that every name, every person should what? Bow his knees. That means, you have to, when you bow your knees, and normally it's in worship, you have to worship who? Christ. But you also, the word, you only can worship what? A God. He is God, not a God, He is God. You see the meaning of the word worship, kneeling down? And as long as you are on this earth and still alive, you have a choice. The devil and the demons 
knows who Christ is. You hear me? They know who He is. But they are not saved. For one main reason. They will not bow their knees. But later at the end, at the final judgment, they will. But it's too late. And it's including you. You don't want to bow your knees while you're still alive. And accept Christ as your Savior your Lord. And accept Him as your God and your Creator. You are lost. I don't care how you, what you think, what you believe. Sorry, folks. I'm very dogmatic when it comes to that. Because I experience it. And I share it and I plead with you. Give your heart. Surrender your life. And you will see that you have peace, joy, and hope. Without that Lord, I mean sorry, without the Lord, you have nothing. What does it profit a man? When he conquers the whole world, can you look at the mark in, in chapter eight, and loses his soul. A big zero. So don't play around. Today is the day of salvation, okay? This is what the Bible says. I don't say that. I told you before. I cannot come I cannot, you know, convince you of things like this. The Holy Spirit can do it through His Word. I'm only here to share His God's Word. But it's a life. And it's up to you. I've done my job when I became a Christian. I share it with others because I know that I know I know where I'm going to spend my eternity with no doubt whatsoever. Oh yeah, the enemy is trying to give me doubt and things like it. And he attacked me. Oh yeah, I know that. But he cannot possess me. He can harass me and he will. Even now I'm talking, I know many times I got problems just coming over here and speak to you people. He harass me. So many things to take away my the time with other problems. And I have to put it aside. And I have to ask the Holy Spirit to give me the strength and the power to rebuke him, spiritually speaking, and come over here and talk to you. It's out of love. Because he loved me first. So folks, thank you for stopping by. If you have gotten anything out of my videos, please give me a thumbs up. If you subscribe, please ring the not notification bell. And I will say then, until next time, God bless you.